SpaceX's Starship spacecraft won't be able to make it all the way to the moon, never mind Mars, all by itself. To get it into orbit and then continue its journey, each Mars or Moon-bound starship will have to meet up in orbit with its brethren in order to fuel up for the journey beyond Earth. But how are they gonna fuel each other? And how many extra starships will it take to just make one trip to the Moon? And, and Mars? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The most important fundamental design goal of Starship is full and rapid reusability, which means propellants being the only thing intentionally expended during launches. However, the overarching purpose of Starship is to support SpaceX's founding goal of making humanity multi-planetary and building a self-sustaining city on Mars. For Starship to have even a chance of accomplishing that monumental feat, SpaceX will not only have to build the most easily and rapidly reusable rocket and spacecraft in history, History, but it will also have to master orbital refueling. So let's go over the refueling equation first. In the context of SpaceX's goals of expanding humanity to Mars, a mastery of reusability and orbital refueling are mutually inclusive. Without both, neither alone will enable the creation of a sustainable city on Mars. A Starship launch system that can be fully reused on a weekly or even daily basis but can't be rapidly and easily refueled in space simply doesn't have the performance needed to affordably build, supply, and populate a city on another planet. A Starship launch system that can be easily refueled but is not rapidly and fully reusable could allow for some degree of interplanetary transport and the creation of a minimal human outpost on Mars but it would probably be one or two magnitudes more difficult, risky, and expensive to operate and would require a huge fleet of ships and boosters from the start. The question of how SpaceX will make Starship the world's most rapidly, fully, and cheaply reusable rocket is a hard one. But it's not all that difficult to extrapolate from where the company is today with the Falcon family. To put it simply, there are precedents set and evidence provided by Falcon rockets and NASA's space shuttle that suggest SpaceX will be able to solve the reusability half of the equation. The other half of that equation, however, could not be more different. The sum total of SpaceX's official discussions of orbital refueling can be summed up in a sentence included verbatim in CEO Elon Musk's 2017 2018 and 2019 Starship presentations. Propellant settled by milli-g acceleration using control thrusters. On the face of it, that simple phrase doesn't reveal much. However, with a few grains of salt, hints from what the company's CEO has and hasn't said, and context from the history of research into the orbital propellant transfer, it's possible to paint a fairly detailed picture of the exact mechanisms SpaceX will likely use to refill starships in space. The cornerstone, somewhat ironically, is a 2006 paper which was written by seven Lockheed Martin employees and a NASA engineer titled Settled Cryogenic Propellant Transfer. Aside from the obvious corollaries just from the title alone, the paper focuses on what the authors argue is the simplest possible route to large-scale orbital propellant transfer. In orbit, under microgravity conditions, the propellant inside a spacecraft's tanks is effectively detached from the structure. If a spacecraft applies thrust, that propellant will stay still until it splashes against its tank walls, which is the most basic Newtonian principle that objects at rest tend to stay at rest. If, say, a spacecraft thrusts in one direction and opens a hatch or valve on the tank in the opposite direction of that thrust, the propellant inside, attempting to stay at rest, will naturally escape out of the opening. Thus, if a spacecraft in need of fuel docks with a tanker, their tanks are connected and opened, and the tanker attempts to accelerate away from the receiving ship. The propellant in the tanker's tanks will effectively be pushed into the second ship as it tries to stay at rest. The principles behind such a settled propellant transfer are fairly simple and intuitive. The crucial question is how much acceleration the process requires and how expensive that continuous acceleration ends up being. According to Cutter et al's 2006 paper, the answer is surprising, assuming a 100 metric ton or around 220,000 pound spacecraft pair accelerates at 0.0001 g or 1 ten thousandths of Earth's gravity to transfer orbit, they would need to consume just 45 kilograms or 100 pounds of hydrogen and oxygen propellant per hour to maintain that acceleration. In the most extreme hypothetical refueling scenario, like a completely full tanker refueling a ship with a full cargo bay, 
Two docked starships would weigh closer to 1,600 tons, or around 3.5 million pounds, and the Millie G acceleration SpaceX has repeatedly mentioned in presentation slides would be 10 times greater than the maximum acceleration analyzed by Cutter et al. Still, according to their paper, that propellant cost scales linearly both with the required acceleration and with the mass of the system. Roughly speaking, using the same assumptions, that means that the thrusting starship would theoretically consume just over 7 tons or half a percent of its methane and oxygen propellant per hour to maintain milli g acceleration. With large enough pipes connecting each starship's tanks, SpaceX should have no trouble transferring 1,000 plus tons of propellant in a handful of hours. Ultimately, that means that settled propellant transfer, even at the scale of Starship, should incur a performance tax of no more than 20 to 50 tons of propellant per refueling. All transfers leading up to the worst case 1600 ton scenario should also be substantially more efficient. Overall, that means that fully refueling an, orbit an orbiting Starship, or depot, with around 1200 tons of propellant, requiring anywhere from 8 to 14 plus tanker launches, should be surprisingly efficient, with perhaps 80% or more of the propellant launched remaining usable by the end of the process. And to go a step further, Cutter et al. note the amount of acceleration required is so small that a hypothetical spacecraft could potentially use Eulich gas vents to achieve it, meaning that custom-designed settling thrusters might not even be needed. Coincidentally, SpaceX has also decided to use strategically located Eulich vents to replace purpose-built maneuvering thrusters on Starship's Super Heavy Boost if SpaceX adds similar capabilities to Starship, it's quite possible that the combination of cryogenic propellant naturally boiling into gas as it warms and the eulage vents used to relieve that added pressure could produce enough thrust to transfer large volumes of propellant. Last but not least, writing more than a decade and a half ago, the only technological barrier Cutter et al. could foresee to large-scale settled propellant transfer wasn't even related to refueling, but rather the ability to autonomously rendezvous and dock in orbit. In 2006, while Russia was already routinely using autonomous docking and rendezvous technology on its Soyuz and Progress spacecraft, the US had never demonstrated the technology on its own. Jump to today and SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft have autonomously rendezvoused with the International Space Station 27 times in 9 years, and completed 10 autonomous dockings all without issue since 2019. Even though SpaceX and its executives have never detailed their approach to refilling Starship in space, in an interview last year, Elon was asked about the butt-to-butt -butt refueling in orbit, and that Elon needs to start testing that refueling system. To which he responded, no, we're gonna get to orbit and back first. We don't need orbital refueling unless you're going to the moon or going to Mars. Then you need orbital refueling. And he also said, I'm not sure it will be the butt-to-butt, -butt. it might be something different. We switched the propellant full drain lines to the side, so coming from the side, so no butt-to-butt -butt refueling, but side-to-side. -side. But one caveat here is that they still refuel through their skirts, kind of like the old butt-to-butt -butt, except using the new side skirt ports. There's a good chance that minor to moderate problems will be discovered and need to be solved once SpaceX begins to test refueling in orbit. But crucially, there are no obvious showstoppers standing between SpaceX and the start of those flight tests. At the end of the day though, those are all solved problems and just a matter of complex but routine systems engineering that the engineers at SpaceX are experts in. And there you have it. Please don't forget to let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below because your support motivates us to continue creating quality content like this. So for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time. Thank you.